15 now. The Fox 5 I team reported how the mentally ill are crowding Georgia jails, attacking guards and fellow prisoners, while others often wait in barren isolation cells for more than a year before trial because there's no place to send them. But Fox 5 I team reporter Randy Travis says the situation could be even worse if it were not for a special program that's showing remarkable results. Randy? Trey Courtney, Russ, in some parts of Georgia, mental health courts have been around since 2001. It's a way to get certain mentally ill offenders out of jail and ultimately the help necessary to get better. This is the first time a television station has been allowed inside. This is all about tough love, and this is a difficult piece of what I do. The target of Gwinnett Superior Court Judge Karen Byer's affection today, a new mom who seemed to be following the rules of mental health court until Chastity's latest drug screen came back positive. To disappoint those around me in the court system, my family, it's... It's rougher on them than it is on me sometimes. Taking coding cough syrup with your history is just, it's just going to, it's going to set, you're setting yourself up for a massive, massive uh, relapse. Her case already involved battery and drug possession. Chastity would spend the next 24 hours in jail as a sanction for her mistake. That was the hardest one today. But one of only a few setbacks the Fox 5 I team witnessed during this unprecedented look at a statewide program credited with making a difference in the often infuriating world of mentally ill offenders. Nobody wants to be mentally ill. They don't like to talk about it. They don't like to uh, be open about it. It is the best thing I spend my time doing. I wouldn't give it up for anything. Sheriffs across our state complain jails can become the worst place for the mentally ill and make staff more difficult to attract. This Gwinnett deputy was fired and later prosecuted for punching a prisoner's face while trying to restrain her during an outburst. She had a history of mental illness before her arrest on battery charges. The deputy later pled guilty to federal civil rights violations. I was, I, I, I definitely was that bad, yeah. Rachel Newman also spent months in the Gwinnett jail mental health section. I went through things that um, I, it hurts my heart when I remember them. Um, Uncontrolled schizophrenia and bipolar disorder sent her to the darkest places imaginable. Eventually arrested for crashing her car into a Swanee Walmart. She meant to do it. Her life, Rachel admits, was a mess. Mental health court gave me the chance to become stable in all areas of my life. And that's what I never had. So what is the answer? How do you break the cycle of arrest, conviction, release and then rearrest. The mental health court floods the zone, helping offenders keep up with their meds, give them therapy, and provide constant monitoring. According to state records, only 26% of graduates have gone on to commit a felony, compared to as many as 81% of those who committed a similar crime but went to prison instead. Good morning. Judge Byers started the Gwinnett Mental Health Court 10 years ago. Working with a team of attorneys, counselors, and law enforcement, she's the head cheerleader in a courtroom that serves as a space more safe than scary. All reports on you are good. Tell me something positive about one person that's either a participant or a court team member. Okay. She's cool and... The court is limited to only taking offenders with a stable home situation. They search for high-risk, high-reward cases. So far, 215 offenders have gone through at least part of the Gwinnett program. 86 have graduated. Across Georgia, records show mental health courts have helped more than 16,000 offenders. If you didn't have the mental health court, would those people be sitting in jail? Absolutely. Without mental health court, that's, these people are in a revolving door and eventually that door doesn't open anymore. Rachel saw the door and slammed it tight behind her. Once homeless, after a year and a half of constant drug testing and finding the right medication, she graduated from mental health court. It was hard. I had family calling me, friend, old friends calling me. Why don't you want to come hang out with me? And I'd say, no, I'm, I can't. It completely changed my life. I mean, I haven't been back to jail in six years. The 33-year-old has a steady job, her own place. And when she wakes up now, she sees light instead of a lifetime of constant darkness. I'm back to normal. My friends and family have their Rachel back. 
Well, Gwinnett's mental health court has a capacity of 35 offenders at any one time. Judge Byers says that they could take a lot more if they could figure out the housing component. Mm -hmm. You have to have stable housing in order to take part in this program. Otherwise, all their work just goes for naught, and they don't have the capacity or the resources to provide housing for these people, at least not yet. Yeah, it looks like Rachel has really benefited from this program. Is it? Do you it's know incredible. anything more about her lifestyle now? What's her relationship like with her family? Her family? Well, she says that she she takes her mother to church now on Sundays. Oh, that's great. She says she says I'm reliable. And why we may not think that's a big deal for someone who's been unreliable for as long as she was, that's a big deal. Yeah. That's yeah. something that she's very proud of. She kept saying it over and over again, I'm reliable now. They got their Rachel back. They got their Rachel back. And, and you know the the number you mentioned that 26 percent recidivism rate that's extraordinarily low as you know yeah that's I mean think of that it's what 74 percent of people not going back through the right. criminal justice system and we've done stories as you know for the last several weeks talking about uh, folks with mental illness being stuck in jail waiting for uh, evaluations waiting for a bed to be treated uh, these people aren't having to go through that very crowded pipeline and it's it's provide it's a narrow it's a narrow group of people unfortunately but at least it's some mm -hmm. it's some progress for this particular problem that we've been focusing on. Might be a model to implement in places all over the country. Yeah, let's see. All right, Randy, thanks. Thanks, Randy.